My name is Tom Chamberlain. I'm the editor-in-chief of The Rake magazine, and we are here at the Huntsman Clubroom to discuss the 15th anniversary of The Rake. I started working for The Rake in 2014. I had a long interview with the great Wei Ko, who I found immediately to be a very inspiring, brilliant thinker, innovative, and was a guy that always thought out of the box. And I'll say this about Wei, is that a real lesson that he's passed down to me is the idea of everything is about details, details, details. You know, really think about every square inch. The pages should be filled with the most scrumptious language that people were not going to be able to find elsewhere on the market. When you reflect on something else, after 15 years being about having having only been there nine but that's sort of sizable proportion of the time it is interesting to think about the changes it's made however i think one of the rake's great properties is its consistency and the fact that the readership have always been provided with something that they have wanted consistently two months at a time to provide some sort of entertainment education and also escape i would say that there was a lot of things that I didn't want to change when I started working at The Rake. The Rake was a terrific B2B magazine, ultimately. It was on every shop in Savile Row. The luxury industry loved it. And, you know, CEOs and creative directors of the luxury industry were on the cover. And I believed that in terms of men's markets, other men's magazines in the market were pitching for a much younger audience. But we were living in an age where most superheroes and action heroes were over 50. And The Rake was the magazine that spoke to the older man, that said to, the, to men over a certain age, you are still relevant. And Hollywood was showing that. So it was a sort a phone call to Hollywood to try and, you know, create a bit of knowledge over there about the rake because they didn't know the rake at all. And so I went on a mission to try and book some Hollywood covers. In terms of my career, this was a particularly significant issue. I was trying to significantly change the magazine's output. It was slightly naughty, it was exciting, it was visually really, really, really great. There were some fascinating articles, brilliant writers, and the effect of this was quite great. People were talking about it a lot. That, I think, put us on the map. We're here celebrating the 15th anniversary of The Rake, and this is the 10th anniversary issue of The Rake. And I love this issue in particular because of the fashion shoot that we did at Mr. Lawrence House in Bedford, New York, where we flew in some models and they dressed in the 50th anniversary collection of Ralph Lauren, which happened to be a collection that coincided with our 10th anniversary. So we sort of teamed up with Ralph Lauren at the time. We even did these ties. Matt Damon. Now, Matt Damon makes me a little bit emotional because this was a an issue that came out during COVID and it was incredibly stressful to, to put together because Matt was incredibly jet lagged. I'd only interviewed him a couple of days before when he was in Australia. And I happen to know he'd gone from Australia to Los Angeles, and then to Cannes. So we went out onto a boat and we got some great shots with Greg Williams of him jumping in and getting wet. Largely, I think, because he wanted to sort of fend off the jet lag. And so jumping into the cold Mediterranean, I imagine, helped. So Michelle Yeoh, I loved doing because she became the Oscar winner for Everything Everywhere All at Once. I've always found her to be a total badass of a woman. She's in her 60s and yet totally kicking out. I mean, you can see her in that film. She's amazing. If we're talking about how men can be as relevant and brilliant and their most essential selves in their 40s, 50s and 60s, then why not women too? Mass Mickelson. This performed unbelievably well. People were buying this all over the world, ordering it a batch of 10 at a time. The following of this man is something that I I didn't quite expect, but actually I was delighted. Josh Brennan was an absolute hero, largely because this was right deep in the middle of COVID. It was meant to be an hour long interview, turned into three hours. It was a extremely memorable photo shoot. Stanley Tucci, nicest man, great actor. He saw the Samuel Jackson cover and spoke to his publicist and said, I really wanted to do something like that. And we made it happen. Over the years, We've just accrued great, interesting, engaging faces for our cover. It's amassed countless stories, great photo shoots, and has been a real benchmark for sort of our, our kind of commercial teams and stuff to, to go out to the world and say that The Rake is doing something that engages audiences and that brings in talent from Hollywood and, and is a remarkable magazine that has its place in the market and probably and I would say definitely leads it. Being asked to do The Rake is one of the great, great privileges of my life. The Rake has been hopefully a term that we have commandeered to mean something that has extraordinary values. And if somehow I've managed to do that, and if that's my epitaph, then fine, I'll be happy with that.
But here's a final point. The rake is nothing without the readers. In fact, it's totally pointless without people who are willing to get the magazine, open the pages and read what's inside. So whatever happens in the next 15 years, what's most important is that it involves you.